Hey, thanks for stopping by today. We got the 99 Harley Davidson. Well, you know it's a Harley Davidson. We got a 99 Road King on the lift today. It's having some electrical issues and needs some other just maintenance stuff as well. So let me give you a walk around on this and talk about some things we're going to replace. And if you're having some trouble with your stator or rectifier, well, you've come to the right place today. Welcome back to Butler Customs Motorcycle Shop. Boy, ain't she pretty. She's prettier than a overtime paycheck on a Friday night. You know what I'm saying? I know you do. So we're recording this video with our GoPro 9 Hero and all the doodabs and garbagob I had to buy for it. Uh, I tried to do it in 5K, just a little kind of playing around with the video kind of thing, sample thing. And the 5K is just way too much processing stuff. <laughs> Uh, for my uh, MacBook. So we're in a 4K for those of you that care. Don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's one more K. What's going on with this bike? It was throwing a lot of codes and just giving the customer a hard time. The codes it was throwing was a DL1, DL5, DL8. Now the DL1 and DL5 deal with the speed sensor. So the DL1 is a speed sensor power output shorted low, DO5 is a speed sensor return shorted high. So we did get him a new speed sensor. He ordered that, we got that in, we'll be replacing the speed sensor on this. But his check engine light would keep coming on and he was having, noticing some battery issues and surging issues. And so the DO8 code was thrown, which is a power overage. And um, I tested the stator and the rectifier, and there is indeed some wonky things going on there. So what we're gonna do is replace the stator, rectifier, and the magnetic rotor. Now, uh, I want you to pay attention to this. The stock ones, as you know, have magnets that are glued and spaced out around this. This is a great upgrade. If you're ever going to replace your stator, buy one of these. The magnets are encased, you don't have to worry about them coming unglued like the stock ones and hitting the stator and messing it up. And this is really a, a great upgrade. It's an encased rotor. Uh, most of them kind of come like this now. So we got the rectifier as well as a new cover for it. Uh, it's uh, kind of encased and made in one. We'll be putting that on. We've got brake pads, we've got filters, we've got oils, and a rear tire to go on. So a busy day here today in the shop, and the weather is nice for you and I to be here working. So let's get busy. Give you a little walk around here. It's a 1999, beautiful, beautiful bike. Got that big Road King headlight on it. So the, this customer keeps it um, pretty shining, pretty shiny. So um, let's get started on the stator side. So here you can kind of see some things that uh, we're gonna have to remove the rear floorboard, front floorboard, shifters, um, this chrome cover piece, the outer cover and then we can access our compensator and sprocket and clutch basket and chain and all that comes out. Then we can get to our uh, stator and our uh, magnetic, I don't know, you call it a magneto? I'll just always call it a rotor that rotates around. The stator stays still, the rotor rotates. So I call it a rotor. I'm not sure what the technical term is, and we can also just swap out the rectifier right there since we're there. But how do you know that a rectifier is bad or good or is it your stator that's bad and good? So let's walk over the procedure. Uh, but first, let me go ahead and drop the oil in the primary so it can be draining while we're talking about 
how to check your stator and your rectifier. Unplug the stator wires, the stator connector from the rectifier itself. And this is a two wire single phase or uh, just a lower amperage. You might have a three wire that's a 50 amp, a little bit higher amperage, but give you plenty of wires here. And one of the first things I do is I inspect the wires themselves. Because these are so long, sometimes they're routed improperly. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm already seeing a tear here with exposed wire. See that? Uh, there might be a little tear starting there. So it looks like this wire here got exposed or hung up on something or you ran over something that caught it. And because it wasn't routed properly, it might have rubbed against the frame here and it has caused exposure and because of that grounded out which shot the stator so the test you can do is with the multimeter there's three tests you do with this two not running one with it running and so we'll turn our multimeter over to ohms horseshoe OL is open line and we'll test these, see what our resistance is in our wires. It's zero, that's good. So if you had a resistance with your wire that was a 0.1, well, like that there, you want to make sure to add that whatever your resist, wire resistance is to your test. So if I had a 0.1 or say a 0.2, then I would add that to my test. Now these plugs, you just take some pliers and pop out this little blue insert here and then you can get to the wires better. So these are full of oil from oil changes. <laughs> so what we're gonna do here, since it's just two wires, we wanna test them together now on this, we want an open line. We, we don't want an open line. We want there to be continuity between the two wires. So wire going in, it cools around, comes out. So that's good. Now, what we don't want is that same reading when we ground out on the frame. Let me get a good ground here. So I don't have any reading there. That's good. And on this side, I don't have any reading there. So it tells me inside there's nothing that's grounded out to the motor and causing it not to work. However, because of this exposed wire, and I could just very easily see that because I checked, I know this is grounded out and probably fried the stator. Now another test you can do is with this disconnected, start the motor and with 1,000 RPM, 2,000, and 3,000 RPM, you will see a different reading. The 1,000 RPM for this amperage um, should be around, it could be as low as I think 16 and as high as, um, you know, close to 50 if you're at the 3,000 RPM range. So you'll go through different RPM ranges and uh, test those if you want. But this has failed to test just basically due to the wire grounding out. And it probably fried uh, the coils or the poles inside. So anytime I replace a stator, I always recommend replacing the rectifier with it as well. Uh, that way you know that you have two good units going in. Why they made these 14 foot long, I don't know, but they did. So. It leaves a lot of wire to be routed wrong and to be caught up in between places it shouldn't be. And because of that, this insulation of the wire can rub off. And what you're left with is an exposed wire like that that grounds out. And then when that does, toast your stator. 
Now, a thing to remember, when you're running this during a running test, you want to go to volts, but you want to make sure that you're not in DC, that you're in AC. This produces AC current. So the rectifier and regulator uh, also, oh, let's see, that's got a, that's got an exposed wire too in the rectifier. So the rectifier regulator, it does both. It rectifies from the AC to the DC and it regulates the voltage to go back to charge your battery. Now, I'll tell you, when you start adding electrical components to your bike, say that you add a radio, say you add LED lights, say you add um, sound system, say you add an amp, say you add brighter lights or whatnot, all that's going to demand more current from your battery. So if you have this, just a two wire, you might want to think about upgrading to the 50 amp, which is a three wire. Instead of the 12 poles in the stator, the 50 amp has 18 poles. So you get a little bit more current, which can feed your battery that's now that you've added things is demanding more. However, if you change your stator to a three wire, of course you have to change your rectifier to that as well. So be aware of that, but you can do that. And that is wise to do if you add a lot of things to your bike. This bike doesn't have the radios and fancy lights and all that kind of stuff. So we went back with the two wire for that. So at this point, we know this is toast and I can feel, it feels like the wire inside is kind of mushy, like it's broken. Uh, but we do have continuity between the two wires, but that's just bad and it toasted our stator. So we'll go ahead and start taking the primary cover off and actually getting to the stator. Got a 5 16 on the rear floorboard. We'll get this out of the way. The primary is already drained and it's not even dripping anymore, so that's good. I'm going to leave this cover on. No need to take it off right now. Uh, we will have to take this cover off up here. That's like a decorative cover. But I want to go ahead and work on the floorboard. Usually, you can take this back uh, piece off here. And that loosens things up enough that I can just swing this down out of the way. Uh, and then all I've got to take off as far as our shifters is just the rear. The front shifter can stay on, it'll be fine. There's clearance for the whole primary to come off there then. And then we'll take our primary bolts out. Then we can get to our inside guts. So I went ahead and got, just went ahead and took that front floorboard off because my kickstand was kind of interfering with it swinging down. But usually if the kickstand's up, this can just swing down out of the way. I did get this uh, cover off as well chrome cover so now we're just ready to take our outer primary bolts off and since i already took these two off we'll start a little lower on these and i just like to go kind of crisscross pattern just to break them free that way we don't worry about warping anything we can leave this cover and this cover on i've got one more here in the center that has a little cap cover on it now that they're kind of all broke free we can just zip them out You will have some that are slightly longer than others. So just keep in mind about that when they go back in. All right, our last one's here. Pull it. This comes down. 
Then we'll set this with our bolt somewhere safe. And uh, that looks like I was the last one in here on uh, March 22. I changed it and I put the mileage there as well. So we will wipe that off and redo that. We'll set this somewhere safe. Now on some models, you will have a little lip here. That little lip, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little lip that for some reason they put in some ears. And when you go to pull this rotor off, it'll hang on this lip. Two options. You can remove the inner primary but that's a whole lot of work. Starter, starter comes off. You got to have a new O-ring in your inner primary, new starter shaft seal, new main shaft seal. Uh, a lot of things have to be replaced. Or you can take a Dremel and shave this little ridge off on the inside. Don't go deep. Don't get over here with your mating surface. You just want to shave off enough here so that you can pull this rotor off. That's what we're gonna be replacing. You'll see some little holes in some of them. Uh, not sure if you can see that or not, but I'll get you over here where you can see. That's just for balancing of the rotor. The other rotors, the new upgraded rotors are a lot better. We're ready to loosen the tension on our um, clutch. Then we can take this circlip out, I'm gonna leave this alone. I'm not gonna mess with this because I'm gonna pull this out with the little uh, uh, plate here as well. That way we know that the clutch is set where he had it. And then all we have to set is on the clutch cable. So we're gonna leave this alone because we're just gonna pull this ring out. But we gotta get the tension off of this first, which is done up by the cable side. Then we can take this clip out, pull this whole thing out, and not have to worry about readjusting our clutch, except for up at the top of the cable. So this looks good, it's good and tight. Uh, I was in here not long ago, uh, well, uh, over a year ago, I guess, but now that we have our tension off of the clutch, we don't have to see how loose this is now. It wasn't like that before, so you've got to do that. You've got to let that tension off. Now we can pull this here out and we'll lay this together inside the cover. And now we can get access to our nut here. But before that, we got to loosen all the way out our adjuster, our chain adjustment, because, or chain tensioner, because this whole unit comes out uh, like the old school ones do. So we'll take a primary chain tensioner and nut all the way off. And you can see how that really loosened things up, but we can't stop there. We need to take this nut all the way out. And the washer. Then this whole unit can slide out with the chain clutch basket and compensator. All right, we'll zip this clutch hub nut off. It is forward, so make sure you're going the right way. There we go, we'll put that over in our outer primary. And our compensator nut is reverse, or the standard thread. So when I take this off, I'm gonna take the cover, sprocket, and I'm gonna leave this gear on here with the chain. Now this whole unit's ready to come out, and before you pull this unit out, make sure you got a place to set it, because it's big, it's awkward, 
and sometimes it's kind of cumbersome and heavy. So I'll grab here and here and just kind of work it out just like that. Now, as you can see, we have access now to our rotor. So this here is what we want to come out. It's magnetized. So it can be kind of uh, hard to wiggle out, but if you'll just be patient, put you some hooks in here and wiggle, 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 it'll come out. Now, I'm not sure if we're gonna hang up on this or not, but I'm gonna pull it out and see how far I can come, push it back, stick some rags up in there, and then start with my Dremel and start cutting this back. Let's get some picks in here, angled picks in here, so that I can kind of work it back and forth and, and see. It might clear, but some models you do have to kind of grind that down a little bit. So I've got a couple different types of picks. I just brought whatever I thought would kind of hook in there best. And then what we're gonna do, just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Remember, it's magnetized. Hey, look at there. So we did clear it. Now keep in mind, there is a spacer there, really thin spacer, so you wanna put that back on. And here is your rotor stock. Now see the magnets, how they're kind of glued in there? Now, these can chip, break, come off, and destroy everything inside. And we have a little bit of evidence of some chipping going on already. So it was definitely time to replace this. So glad we did that. Let me show you the new rotor compared to the old. So here you can see the difference in the rotors. One's encased and sealed. You don't have to worry about the magnets coming out. Now we'll take these bolts out for the stator and uh, we will be replacing those bolts. These bolts here are torqued to yield so you really don't need to reuse these. Now when you're getting this stator off, you want to be careful as you pull not to damage that main the shaft there. So be very careful. Don't worry about the wires. You're going to cut them anyway. But pay attention to that shaft there. Now you can pull the wires through just enough to snip them, cut them off, and then you can... And this was in pretty bad shape anyway. So I apologize for losing some audio here. What we have is the new stator here. And it's a good thing just to inspect it and make sure you got everything in the package and look at the wires and how they're gonna feed through. And also you've got a packet of your new bolts that you wanna use. And then just kind of, you know, Hold it up, compare it to the other one, uh, make sure thickness is the same and you're not gonna have any issues when you run it back in. So just kind of take some time and visually inspect it. So now you can just pull that connector. All right, so what you got here on this connector, it has some rubber boots in the back. These new connectors come with new rubber boots so we don't have to worry about destroying these so you can stick just about anything in there to kind of pull it up and you might not be able to actually get them out but just get them moving and then when you pull the wire out they should come out with it there's a lot of oil and road grime and junk gets caught up in this so you want to make sure you clean it out now on the inside there's a little clip you can't probably see it on the camera but you'll put a flat head in there or any kind of little pick and you'll pull up on the clip and then this slides out okay so these can go either way you don't have to pay attention to which way they go in but don't put them in yet we'll do the same on the other and they'll come right out you can see how much oil and stuff gets in there. All right, those are done. Now don't put it back in there yet. If you want to spray this out and clean it out, you can. But let's go ahead and run our new one in. 
Now there is a way this goes in. You don't want to put it in this way with the harness on the outside of this. You want to put it in this way where the harness, the wire goes behind because your rotor is going to come over and spin. I have seen guys, oh man, I put a new stator in and next day it didn't work. Well, they put it in like this and the rotor cut through all the wires. So you got to put it in this way so it goes in the back. You have these different levels of, I don't know what you call them, the kind of catch as you pull through. But you want to pull through till this flat piece gets up against the back of your case. I'm going to start my wires in and what I'll do, I'll do one, one wire in the hole and get that rubber grommet through. Then I'll do the other wire through the same hole and I'll make sure that rubber grommet comes through there. I'll pull my wires out here and then I will orientate this to where my holes line up with the threads. I'll carefully set this over. I'll continue to pull with this and I'll watch that end go in. I'll push with my finger, pull as well. Okay, one went through and two went through. Now let me show you with a light what it needs to look like before you mount this back. All right, so it might be kind of hard to see. That black piece is all the way up against that. And that is what you want. Now we're ready to put our stator back in. It does come with new bolts that already has a thread sealer on it. And you need to look up your torque specs because Evo torque specs for the stator bolts, I believe are 30 to 40 inch pounds. Well, for the big twins, they're almost double that. I think 50 to 75 or something. I usually split the difference and do 60 inch pounds. So you need to know that when you get ready to install this. So we'll line our screw holes up, our bolt holes up, run one in, two in, three and four. They all lined up well. We'll get our inch torque out. That's 50, 55, regular ratchet for now. Just till I can get them kind of seated. Right, so this here is what you want it to look like that flat piece will actually flatten once you put the stator push it back on it'll flatten up against the back of the case so that's how you want it to look right there and on the outside of the engine you'll see that it's come through all the way as well so now we're gonna put the rotor on and just don't slam this rotor on it's magnetized so I put my picks back in the rotor holes and I use that as I put the rotor on to kind of keep some force back my way so it doesn't just slam on there so just take your time and be careful and it'll set right up in there using those picks once you get it lined up on the grooves on your shaft Then we'll put our little ring back on so we don't forget that. Clean it up a little bit. 
and I'll place that on. <sighs> These are always hard to kind of finesse by yourself. I like to try to start with getting that tensioner kind of lined up. There we go. That'll kind of help hold everything once we get it. Don't fall. There we go. Once we get it up in the hole there. Now we can work on these. Alright, the clutch is going in. That's going in. And that is going in. Nice. We did put our spacer back there behind that rotor. I did clean the threads up on both the shaft, the main here, and the transmission shaft as well. Clean those threads up. We'll also clean the threads on the nut for the compensator and for the clutch basket. We'll red lock tie both of those. Remember, reverse thread on this one. This has a locking nut. No need to put any kind of lock agent on that. Now, if you don't have a thread cleaner, a good thing to use is you can find your little pick just to get down in those threads. All you're doing is getting that old uh, red lock tied off that was on there from before because now it's hard and crusty and you want good clean threads going back in there so it'll it'll flake off pretty good for you if you use the pick method you can just turn it make sure the pick fits in the thread don't damage your threads I'm trying to clean your threads and then I've got a little bristle wire brush I'll run through there to clean that off a little better Got our threads cleaned up. We'll go ahead and throw some, a couple drops of red on here. Putting a reverse thread nut on always messes with my head. <laughs> Seems like I'm in a dream or something doing it wrong. Compensator nut, I'll throw tons on that. Just cause you don't want that dude um, getting loose now on the back side of this nut you want to take you some oil wherever you can find it and oil the back of this nut up that's going to set right here so you want that to be oiled up that's per the manual why I don't know you tell me that's just what they say all right, I'll put this on here. There we go. She went back in there now. All right. We're good to tighten. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two bolts down just so I can get tension on the chain tensioner. Uh, and then we'll torque them. Just doing that just so we can get the tension on our chain and then we will torque them down once we can hold the chain from spinning. I like to get under here and kind of hold that chain up as much as I can. I don't know if I'm bleeding or if that's locked tight. Yeah, that's me bleeding. Hmm. I don't know what I cut myself on. I can't even feel it. I think a torque on this is 25 foot pounds, but I'll just put some ooga boogas on it and uh, don't worry about it. 
So now let's get these torqued down. All right, so our clutch hubs at 60 foot pounds on this model and then 165 on this compensator nut. And we'll get our little tool here and then we will go in reverse. to 60 foot pounds. And I'm gonna, I don't wanna bust my knuckles right there. All right. And then just to be sure, give a little extra just as a safety precaution all right so all that's done now um, might tighten that up just a little bit more there we go felt it move then Yep. Yeah. Now this is done, we can put our cover on and torque those down and we'll blue lock tight those with our new gasket, put our floorboard rear and front on. So let's move on to wiring in this stator and the old uh, bracket uh, connector thingamajiggy. Super simple and let's just go ahead and do that. All right, so here's our bracket that we're gonna reuse. Again, these come with these rubber grommets that go down in here. And these are ambidextrous, you'd say? I don't know. So they go either way. So you just stick one in there. Not that way, in the back. <laughs> and I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. All right, that's seated in there well. We'll take our other one, either way, snapped in. Now to check it, pull, pull, and that's good. Now we'll take our rubber grommets and just run them down in there, just like that. And just to make sure they're in there, take you really just kind of anything, push them on down in a little bit. Now we'll, don't forget our blue uh, kind of clip there and that's it our wiring for the stator is completely done and we can run this back in the factory routing to make sure that it doesn't get tangled up again and the wires get stripped out like last time now we'll change our rectifier out it's literally two bolts Plug it right back in to your stator, and that's done. And then you'll have another plug that runs back to the frame that goes back to your battery. Just unsnap it, and then the other one will snap right back in. Okay, so to remove this rectifier, there's usually a lock nut here and one on the other side. There's studs that are studded into the frame coming up that the rectifier just sets down. However, this customer has these studs that go on here and then there's a cover, a nice chrome cover that goes over the rectifier. Whoever put these studs in, there's a smooth side and then there's a nutted half inch or 7 16 inch side. Whoever put it in, put it in backwards and put the stud, the nut side down I don't know how they got it in there I don't know how they got tightened but it took me about three hours to try to get these both off and if I ever find the guy we're going to sit down and have a come to Jesus meeting I finally got them off using four or five different tools because you can't get nothing in here to bite on it 
and you're not supposed to because it's supposed to be turned this way then when you take your cover off you can just take the whole stud out from the top I might have wrote down three or four bad words on paper and then thrown it away but we got it out so now with both out we can just pull this up let it hang down and then to get the wires out that run up to the battery we have to go to the battery so with the battery out now this is the circuit breaker that we need access to we will need this yellow heat shrinked wire that runs to this circuit breaker and then this ground wire that goes to the frame right here that's the wires that run to our rectifier one's ground and one goes to a breaker that goes to your uh, battery to charge it so we'll take this nut off here and we'll take this nut off down here below it not this one here we'll leave this here this runs to your starter and then uh, charges back to your battery now we're underneath the right side of the frame at the moment you just run the wires out you might have to cut some zip ties you got the little connectors there that you just put a flathead screwdriver in twist and they pop up now we got the old one out and we're going to run the wires for the new one now you'll notice that aftermarket ones come with two connectors but they're not colored like the stock one where this was yellow and you knew it went on the circuit breaker so which one goes where well the starred one which is like a clamp kind of fitting that goes on your ground the small one here goes on your circuit breaker I don't think this small one will fit on the ground side because it's a bigger bolt so there's really not a way to get them mixed up but always remember that's your ground this will be to your circuit breaker this feeds the power back to your battery so we're going to snake these through and up the side of the frame by the oil spout and then up into the battery compartment i wish i could leave my skin behind in this old rented room Float my way across the great divide and be buried in you. I've been looking far and wide for what I gotta prove and putting peaks in my rear view. Well, it's colder here than anyone told me the south could get, and I took to staying up really. Tobacco burns the way that bridge between us did And I'm left looking at the glowing ends Okay, so once you have your wires connected Then just zip tie them where they're out of the way of the battery Zip tie them to the hoses and stuff coming down here Your main objective here is to keep the wires away from the pipes and not crossing under the ground frame so just run it down across the top like the other wires zip tie them to the other wires or to the frame and it comes out that end pretty easy now let's connect the connector together route that properly with the stator connector and then our rectifier and stator are done all right so i lost this audio as well i'm gonna have to get brand new mic i'm sorry about that but we're going to replace the speed sensor it's right there uh easy to get to one bolt 316 allen head just take that bolt off that sensor slides up and then the wires just feed through i really don't know why they sent it with the connector not connected to the wires um there really wasn't a need to because there's plenty of room to get it up inside that battery box it connects right beside that circuit breaker we were working on earlier so i'll just take that off and uh, then run the wires up through now on the stator and rectifier the connectors are there and we just connect them i don't know why they give you so much wire 
from the rectifier to the stator. I don't know, it's like 14 foot of wire. It's ridiculous. So this was the problem that the customer had. The wires actually weren't routed correctly and they got bare and they shorted out. So just inspect your connectors. I mean, they should be clean and cleaned out. And we'll just snap those together. And then we're going to route these wires back up underneath the front motor mount. I found that's kind of the best place to do it. Now, this it come with these kind of harnesses that clip in and then clip on to the bar but or the frame and they're just junk they're just not good they don't stay in there and that's probably what caused the issue that connector come out of that little bracket there and um, fell down and rubbed up against the frame so we're going to tuck it up nice and neat um, i use zip ties now if you're worried about the zip ties coming off you use metal zip ties, but with metal zip ties, you got to be careful because metal zip ties around the wiring could cause the wiring to eventually rub and expose itself again, creating the same problem that we had in the first place. So I use the plastic zip ties and I use two instead of just one. So if I zip tie something up, I do two. And that seems to work well and gets it tucked up out of the way. And so we'll do that now. Well, folks, that's going to do it for here in the shop today. We've got the stator in, got the rectifier on, got the speed sensor in. Now, there's some other stuff i got to do with the bike. Uh, brake pads, rear um, tire, tightening up some bolts here and there. Nothing major. I don't want to bore you with that. But I've had fun with you in the shop here today. And tell your mama now, I said hi.